Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for being so amazing to us, God. We thank you for, for blessing us with your presence, God. And we know that you are going to do an amazing thing through our dear sister Tasha, God. Speak to her. Open our hearts and our minds so that we may be receptive to the word you have for us this afternoon, God. Whatever plan the enemy has, God, I, I, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. The enemy has no place here in the name of Jesus because where you are, the devil can't be, God. So we expect you to come through, show up like you typically do, God. Just do your thing through our sister, God. We ask you all these things to your son's holy and precious name. God, we know you're going to do it this afternoon. God, we expect great things this afternoon. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.
children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Now, you see, I'm not just here to give you a message. More importantly, I stand here before you to teach you a lesson. All right? So we're going to actually start off with prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful, Lord, for just this abundance of this blessed Sabbath day, Lord, that you've given us. This ability where we could come together, Lord, and learn something new, Lord. Help that the words that I speak today will penetrate the hearts of your children because the words are coming from you and not me, Lord. Yeah. Ask that you continue to be with us, Lord, as we, we go into this word to understand how great a God we serve. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right? So to understand this parable, we have to break down each verse. And remember, I said I'm going to do a little twist on this sermon today. So, why did Jesus leave Galilee? Verse 21. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre. So, this man Christ Jesus was very sought after. Assumedly, he left Galilee to escape some type of rapture. Or, you see, there's no clear indication as to why he left. But we know that Christ's death was part of some test. Right? Okay. However, he moved into an area that most Jews would have considered unclean, but he had to escape for some time to display to his disciples an unusual scene. So he ended up in Tatari and Sidon. Verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region, and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. So, let me give you a little bit of backstory. The Canaanites, right, were considered wicked, idolatrous people that descended from the land of Canaan. So, Gentile is actually an English translation of the word goyim, which means people, nations, and the Greek word ethne, which means nations, people groups, and people. Gentiles were often referred to as pagans who did not know the true God. Many Jews took pride in their culture and religious heritage and considered Gentiles unclean. Doesn't that sound rather familiar? I got you on this, right? Oh, how we could proudly look down on people and condemn them. And Christ has to reveal that he is the root and we are the stem. We favor tradition and culture over God's word. And wonder why we don't attract more people, you heard? Your culture or where you come from is not in control. God came and made this entire world whole. Yeah. We see from this passage that this Gentile knew exactly who Jesus was by calling him, O oh Lord, Son of David. So the disciples assumed that this lady did not know God. Why? Because he was from the land of the Canaanites. As you can see when we move on to verse 23. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. So this lady pleaded with God for mercy and ignored her. What a great controversy. Right? The disciples told her to flee due to her begging. But she really just wanted a piece of heaven. You see, he proves from time to time who's really his and looks at her actions like an open book quiz. So, so how many times do you feel like God ignores your request? How many times do you ask God for something and you're like, man, he ain't going to do it. I'm just going to do it on my own. How many times do you have that inclination that he's taking too long to answer your request and you just give up? Funny enough, are your actions showing real faith or are you just on, putting on a show? Right? So let's read verse 24. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yep. Jesus tells us, lady, I was only here to help God's lost sheep, these people of Israel. That's the little backstory about the Israelites, right? So if we recall in Numbers 13, Moses sent people out to spy on the people in Canaan to see the type of people that they were. How are they described? They're described as large and fierce people, not easily defeated. So the Israelites knew they would need God's divine intervention to defeat the Canaanites. So we can apply at this very moment 
that we take up responsibilities on our own, even when we know we can't do it. And then we come back to God and say, well, hey, I needed your help. When we knew that in the very beginning, Christ said, hey, listen, I was in control. How? Oh, how little faith we really have. Right? You never thought about that? Like you, you pray to God for something, you ask him for something, and then you, you give up, as I mentioned before. Because we think that we already have the answer, but God said you can't have the answer because I already had the answer. So if you just left it to me to begin with, you wouldn't need to worry. Now, he's proven a very important part, like a point to the disciples. A very important point. So, if you think about it, how many times did the Israelites turn away from Christ? Plenty of times. Right? Countless amount of times. And he's still in the business of helping the, the Israelites, despite the many times they flew away from him. Now, his grace and mercy is for all of those who will receive it. You see, this is a test to see how far you'll go to achieve it. Because the enemy's out there being the biggest deceiver. And as people, we just walk around being the receiver. Think about it. Like, when we got a prayer, when we got a prayer, we just like, God's going to do to us anyway. And we're looking at people like, oh, oh no, like, you're not like us. But we ready to get collected every single moment. Let's go on to verse 25. Then she came. Alright, so again she pleaded, saying, Lord, help me. And we remember that the Canaanites worship pagan gods. So if she didn't really believe in Jesus, yeah. then why would she plead and worship him? Right. I got something for you, right? Okay. Do we plead and beg Christ only when we want to think? Mercy. And then we forget to pray when we have everything? metaphors to keep us connected. So we learn to lean on him and not be disconnected. Yes. Right? So, read verse 26. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it with the little dogs. So I wanted to stay a little longer on this particular verse. Right? Because in Bible times, and in some translations, Jews were actually considered dogs. Right? And, but that wasn't the implication in this statement. Although we can easily say that Jesus insulted the woman, right? We can easily say that, right? It seems like she was being insulted, like he was calling her a dog, right? Does it seem that way? However, Jesus wasn't calling the lady a dog, but metamorphically telling the woman his duty at this time was to the people of Israel, not the Gentiles. Recklessly taking his attention away from Israel would violate his mission, which be would which technically would be like a father taking away food from his child to give it to the dog. You understand? All right, so the exact word Jesus used here was the Greek word canarium, which means a small dog or pet. You know, that's, that's, his, that's what he was comparing it to. And he was not using the word kuan, which means a dog. And you know when someone calls you a dog, I'm like, you a dog. And most times you hear a lady calling a man a dog, all right, which means of impure mind. We can clearly see that this woman did not have an impure mind because she knew exactly who her Lord and Savior was. So Jesus frequently tested people to prove their intentions, often through your response to the questions that are asked. His response to the Canaanite woman is similar. In testing her, Jesus declined her request and explained that she had no legitimate expectation of his help. Um. Why? Why do you need my help? And you worship pagan gods, right? So, once again, he's proven a point to his disciples that you can see from the video that they were all with him. Like, they were all with Jesus. So once again, still proving a point. And in, in testing her, Jesus declined her request, and like I said, explained that he, there was no reason that she was actually seeking help. So this woman actually lived out the principle that Jesus taught in the parable of the persistent widow. If I remember that parable in Luke, Luke 18, 1 to 8. And that lady begged and begged and eventually God granted her request. Now this question can directly apply to us. Can we make a request at the moment where you should have faith and then give up? Right? And then you're like, hmm. You gotta ask yourself, because God is gonna ask this question when he comes back, and it's written in Luke 18.8. When he does return, and I'm paraphrasing, how many will he find on earth who actually have faith? It's kind of a hard, because we know that faith is um, the act of, I mean, see, I'm about to paraphrase, maybe I should just take the dictionary version. 
but, um, <laughs> but in my own words, faith is of course the thing that you cannot see, right? Because obviously like a lot of things that this world dictates on is by facts. But we know that with God, you can't go just based on facts because it's not everything that you can see. All right? You can't see air, but we know it exists, right? So I'm going to switch for a moment so you can catch this feeling of the reason, of the very reason you should always be repentant and kneeling. Yes. It's interesting how we can consider that question insulting. If you honestly believe so, then it's time for some consulting. Mm. We have friends who so easily call us out of our name, but never correct it and move on without shame. Mm. Most times we go around without even thinking and wonder why our values are so quickly shrinking. Right? So, verse 27. <laughs> verse 27. And she said, Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Come on. All right. So her response obviously was true. But even dogs, because I have a pet dog, and let me tell you something. My dog is a greedy dog. She would walk up to me and, like, she probably not even eaten. I had some cane from Jamaica. Bless her. <laughs> and I'm eating it, and I know she doesn't eat cane. But because I'm eating, and there's a plate in my hand, she tends to follow me if she don't eat cake. <laughs> but see, like I said, because dogs know that, they can eat from the crumbs of their master, her response proved that she understood fully what Jesus was saying, yet had enough conviction to ask anyway. Right? So her intentions were not that she was too low for grace. Because remember, Christ died for heaven's sake. Mm. This woman was disgraced, yet paid the price for the ultimate healing from our son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. And then we think about it. Jesus then replied, because of your faith and its greatness, your request has been granted and her daughter was instantly healed. Now, we know the answer to this. God could have healed her right away, right? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> but then again, what would that prove? That we only believe when Christ makes a move? Mm. Right? Think about it, right? Right. right? So, how many times do we look for instant gratification? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking about myself here, but let's, let's think about it. <laughs> when it does happen, does that mean he's not listening? Because mm -hmm. all he's doing is really testing your actions. Right? To see if that you'll give up or keep on moving forward, right? So God has to prove our loyalty and faith in him from time to time. Because when things are going so perfect, we forget him. Can anyone relate? I want to speak more. You can relate? All right, good. Just so want to make sure. So in closing, I want you to ponder this. Are you going to have enough faith to the very end that he's going to see you through? Do you have enough faith that Jesus cried on the cross for our sins? and he's coming back for his people? We see a supposed unbeliever pleading at Jesus' feet amongst his disciples. Now, they don't want anything to do with this annoying lady, right? Her faith was so strong in Christ that no matter what the disciples said, she was, even if God ignored her, that she was going to, she was going to keep on moving forward and not leave without getting what she came for. However, she is the exact replica of the people today, right? The Christians who believe they got it all look down on people like, you ain't, you ain't like me. You don't got no shot in this because you're not like me. You're different. But we don't, we don't say it. It's in our actions that move everything. Because we don't need to frown on them. People. We don't need to say it because you might get some other things might happen to you. But you're not going to say it, but your actions slows everything, right? So I got a quick message for you. The minute you think you got it all together, I suggest you go back and start all over. You may think that your faith is so strong, but when you get tested and find out you're wrong, it might be too late. But with our God so mighty and great, you still have the forgiveness where we all can relate. Right? So the greatest test will be if our faith is strong enough to uphold to the end. It doesn't matter the size or quantity. Jesus' grace is sufficient to help us no matter where we come from. Amen. Right? And that's my message. And in ending my message, I, there was a song that pressed upon my heart this afternoon that it just, just listen to the words, not 
so much with the beat, because the beat kind of may have a little rocking. But I want you to actually listen to the words of the song. And I, you just need to hold on a little bit longer when you feel like you want to let go.
he wants to make sure that you stay loyal to the end. Because yeah. to be honest with you, some people really don't want to go to heaven. And I've heard it myself. Some people don't. They're like, yo, I'm just living my best life now. Because I only got one life to live. But because, <laughs> but because we know who holds the gift of eternal life, we're going to hold on to that little bit of faith. Yeah. That little bit of faith. Yeah. So that when he comes back, he'll receive us yeah. with him. And wonderful and righteous Father, thank you so much for your timely messages. We're so grateful, Lord, that you've given us a spirit of faith, a, a, a spirit of forgiveness, Lord, a spirit just to dwell and to hold on to you just a little bit longer when we feel like giving up. We thank you so much for this wonderful Sabbath day, Lord, where we can come together as one under one faith, believing and knowing that, Lord, that you died on the cross for our sins, but you are coming back to receive us once more in your heavenly kingdom. We give you all the glory knowing that nothing ever surpasses your grace and mercy. No matter where we come from, it doesn't even matter where we come from, Lord, but it is where we're going. And no matter how people may look upon us, frown upon us, Lord, or think that we're not of them, we know that we are of you because we're made in your image. We thank you so much, Lord. We ask that you forgive us of our sins, Lord. And as we depart from this place, help us not to depart from your presence. Help us to just keep on holding on until you come back and receive us in that great, great enough morning. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen.